Welcome back. Now, every day, children in Kabwe in Zambia are separated from their families due to illness or poverty and are forced onto the streets. One Irish man has set up Zanda, a charity dedicated to providing much-needed aid to these children. And Padraig O'Fanin, the director of Zanda, joins us now to tell us his story. A very welcome, uh, Pat. Um, Pat. Because you're just hot off the plane from Zambia. You're back for your holidays. You're living out there full-time now. Just tell us what you're doing out there what Zanda does out there at the moment and how things are uh, right at this moment. Phew. Where do I start? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're fresh off the plane. Uh, okay, so uh, Zanda is the, the rather fancy name for our charity. We're involved in supporting a couple of projects in and around the town of Kabwe, which is 150 kilometres north of the capital, Lusaka. Uh, basically, Sables is, a, is a, a full primary school now and a shelter for orphaned and street children. Uh, it's a school aimed at the, the most vulnerable kids, the ones who can't afford any other form of education. So we take them in, we feed them, we clothe them, we medically treat them, uh, we educate them. That's basically... You've described what as a, what, a school, school, a hospital. Well, we support a hospice uh, just up the road from us, yeah. So school, we support the hospice and we have our shelter, our orphan, if you want to use that word, yeah. Okay, wow. Can you tell us how it all started? Because you're a teacher and then a principal. I was in a previous incarnation, yeah, we a few years ago. Uh, I was a teacher and principal in St. Joseph's uh, Primary School in Fairview in Dublin. And about oh, 13 years or 14 years ago, we got an invitation from the Christian Brothers who said, who would like to come and visit our operations in Zambia? And I said, that's okay, that sounds like a junket. I can do junkets, yeah, but we don't have a bit of that. So I travelled out, uh, far from a junket it was. Mm -hmm. So I went out and saw... Uh, condition some of the kids in Zambia live in, saw some of their projects and was bowled over and very moved by it, that would be said. Maybe even a few tears were shed. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, make no mistake, these are children in, in desperate situations. Oh, absolutely. These kids are far at the bottom of the pile. We're talking about kids living in like rooms that are maybe three metres by two metres. Uh, that we got the entire home, no furniture, very little in the way of clothing, no pots, no pans, no nothing and very little food. These kids would probably eat maybe once a day if they're lucky. And what they'd be eating wouldn't be a uh, top of the range stuff either. So certainly we're dealing with the children from the very, very bottom of the scale. Absolutely. So at the end of at the end of my my, my first visit there, the, the the brother said, "Who'd like to get involved? Who'd like to lend a hand?" So yeah, put me down for a bit of that as well. So uh, they said, "Right, well, we're supporting a project in Cabway. There's a little embryonic uh, project for street kids working in Cabway. If you'd uh, like to head up there and lend a hand, you'd be more than welcome." So I went up there and got involved. And the rest is history. So for the last, uh, for the next following 10 years after that, we went backwards and forwards with various friends and relations and groups and helped out. Then, a couple of years ago, big retirement came around, mm -hmm. so, uh, so it makes sense to uh, do the thing properly and go out full time. So. Not, not for you, the golf course or putting, putting the feet no, up, it's incredible undertaking. You're there full time now. Uh, and, and what does that allow you to do and what kind of improvements to the lives of these children does it allow you to make? Okay, well, we're, we're there full-time now. We're into our third year there, uh, full-time. Um, improvements that we've expanded the school. We now have a full primary school for these kids. These kids wouldn't have um, education without us. Oh, God. We're seeing some amateur yeah, footage, there. Pat, of, yeah, of sure. the whole setup there, I suppose. Well, you're very good researcher, because I don't know where you got that from. I've never <laughs> seen this clip before. But give us a typical day, Pat, okay, typical these day. children, uh, because these, these, these are children kids, okay. who are forced out onto the streets and sure. kind of unimaginable, unimaginable uh, yeah. things from a parent's point of view. Absolutely. Well, there's, there's, two, there's two, uh, two dimensions, or two aspects to it. Uh, there's the day pupils and the ones in the shelter. So we take the day pupils first of all. They live in uh, various compounds, or I suppose you'd call it a slum. Slum areas, Makalulu, Katondo, these would be the names of them. Uh, Makalulu is said to be the second biggest compound or slum in sub-Saharan Africa second only to Soweto. So the children, our day pupils come from there, uh, they would be living in families with more likely than not their grandparents rather than their parents. AIDS has wiped out the middle generation mm. in Zambia and much of Africa. That's the big challenge at the centre of all this, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that's what, well, one of the major, major yeah. factors in producing all these orphans and homeless and destitute kids. Mm. So in, in these compound areas, the kids would get up with, with, uh, with as the sun rises, so they'd be getting up around six hours in the morning. Uh, they'd walk to our centre to Sable, in some cases it take them an hour to walk, some maybe a bit more. They come in then, they play around, at 7.30 we provide breakfast for them. So we have a great big cook, Madam Judith, who <laughs> stores a big breakfast mm. up every morning. So at 7.30 they breakfast, at 8 hours then school starts, it goes on to 12.30. 
they play around a bit more, then we have lunch for them all. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I know one of the main reasons they come is for the food. Of course. Yeah, so um, then they have lunch after lunch, then we have a range of after school activities for them, you know, netball, basketball, volleyball, soccer. We have a beautiful choir. Um, judo is a great big success story with us as well, we have a judo club for them. So not all along, so rather than send them back into the destitution we gotta try and keep them keep them and some of them have lived there in the orphanage okay, or the shelter. They, they, they will be the day people I suppose they would head home at about sixteen or seventeen hours, twenty four hour clock in Zambia, so four or five o'clock in the afternoon they'd head home. Separately then we have a shelter which is where we have our kids that we've taken literally off the streets, street children. Yeah. Uh, these would have no known relatives. Uh, they would just be living on the streets. We would have gone, walked on the streets, found them, invited them to join us. Oh They'd come goodness. in, into the street. A lot of them would be addicted to glue. Uh, you probably remember glue sitting yeah. in a big, big deal in Ireland 20 or 30 years ago, same crack there. So all these would be smoky glue um, out of their minds. We'd what age is Pat? Uh, the youngest we have is four. Oh my the, goodness. The oldest guy we have is uh, 16. Yeah. So we have 24 of those kids with us in, in the centre living with us permanently 365 days a year. So when the day people go home, those guys stay around a bit, do a bit of studying for school, that help us, and uh, watch a bit of television, go to bed, and start again. So, so 365 Apart days Apart from the sheer um, you know, basic human need of shelter and food, what can the skills uh, and education that these kids are learning do for their lives? Uh, you're asking hard questions. Uh, if there is to be any way out of the... Of the the gutter or whatever if there has to be any way up it has to be through education yeah. Yeah. so our objective is to give these kids the worst off the bottom of the pile as i say the best possible chance the best possible education that they can get they wouldn't have education otherwise because every school we're the only free school in Catholic, for instance, every school charges some money, no matter how small. But every school charges money, so we're offering them free education. If there is to be a way out, it has to be through education. Some of them are very, very, very clever kids. Mm. So with the opportunity we give them, hopefully, they'll go on through secondary school, on to college, and yeah. they'll take it from there. It's it's a hard call. Funding is obviously a big issue with, with these things, Pat. Mm. How are you funded, and what can people do if they want to help? Okay, funding, funding is a big struggle. And in, to run the whole project, lock, stock and barrel, it's about 50,000 euro a year, which on one hand it seems to be not very much. On the other hand, trying to raise 50,000 euro a year is quite a struggle. We're blessed with a couple of very, very good supporters, very uh, people who have been, been out with us, seen what we do, trust us, believe us and work with us. And then very many other people who've just heard about us and trust us and get stuck in as well. Uh, most of our fundraising is small scale stuff. People doing coffee mornings for us. Uh, we have Christmas Eve bagpacking in Northern Supermarket in Contact, a wonderful supermarket, mm -hmm. very good to us. That is in there every Christmas Eve, that's a great gig. Um, coffee mornings, bagpackings, uh, table quizzes. There's one coming up uh, around the corner from you in, yeah. in Cavanis on the 18th of October. Just thought I'd get that in there. Um, so bits and pieces like that. We have a couple of very good big benefactors as well. Uh, Rotary Club of Dublin have been very, very generous to us. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, Is there a website, Pat, that people website? can yeah, log on to sure. if they were feeling generous yeah. this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Uh, www.samdaireland.org is the website. There it is on the screen uh, now. Okay, and we have a very lively uh, Facebook page, Samda Ireland. For right. to Facebook, and you get all the details there. Well, and, well uh, I hope people have got a, a, just a little sense from what you've, you've spoken about, about about what you guys are doing for, for these these kids. As you say, just desperate situations mm -hmm. out there, Incredible. and if people want to help, uh, they can. By the way, Pat is, is a bit of a big figure in the GEA community in in, in uh, North Dublin as well, and a Waterford uh, background that's as well. I know tomorrow. you'll be tuning in uh, tomorrow to watch the semi final. But that's that's a discussion for another day. But Pat, just there. just a one little point there. I hope you got a flavour from that little bit of video that, that like what I'm describing is kids in serious poverty and uh, hunger and lack yeah. of clothing and all the rest of it but the, the basic yeah. message of our place as you would have seen from that is happiness and joy Sorry. and uh, sparkling kids and delight and yeah. Yeah. Pat thanks for joining us this no morning thanks stuff. for having us well done for retirement to good use yeah. that's for sure <laughs> up next tailoring and the catwalk for both him and